Welcome to the Orpheum Cinema, the ghost of the Orpheum Cinema. This is the actual box office without the Attack of the 50-Foot Woman poster in it, of course. When you looked through there, you saw somebody selling you tickets to the Orpheum. Then, with films like The Kiss of Death, and I even ran one of the most hated films in the, in the, in the whole 90s, hated <laughs> by C.G. Allen, who was a murder junkie. And then these are the beautiful movie stars that were the icons. Barbara Stanwyck, Judy Garland, Betty Davis, Kate, of course, Joan, Audrey, Lana. Then this was behind the concession stand. This is uh, Aloha, the Princess of Passion, and everybody that bought popcorn at the Orpheum or candy or sodas stood there and stared at this while they were doing so. Okay, now this is the very faded Midnight Movies poster from the Coolidge Theater, a revival house in Boston, Cambridge, Massachusetts, and in from the 60s. It's probably from around 69 or 70, maybe 72. And uh, it has films like Suspiria, Faster Pussycat Kill Kill, Wild in the Streets, The Evil Dead, The Thrill Killers, Reform School Girls, the Festival of the Bizarre and Insane. <laughs> and there's, there's John Waters' Multiple Maniacs at the bottom. Uh, the Scopatone movie. The first video, mu music videos, were the Scopatone movies. The Scopatone movies played in actual jukeboxes, and they, they had a, like a TV screen, and they showed you dance movies, some vaudeville, all kinds of crazy stuff, rock and roll, uh, Spike Jones. <laughs> okay, and I ran them at the Orpheum. These are all films that were run at the Orpheum. And here we go farther over. These are all films, iconic films that played at the Orpheum. Of course, Casablanca, uh, Rex, King of the, of the Sierras, Mothra, The Curse of the Demon, The Children of Paradise, and of course, King Kong. And then there's The Bad and the Beautiful, Cry Baby Killer, uh, Jack Nicholson's first film, Teenagers from Outer Space. And that wall, there's Judy Garland, there's Divine and the Infant of Prague. Then there's the, the character actors that were the backbone of cinema from, from all, of, all the studios. These people, men and women, gave you cinema. They gave you the ideas that, uh, that you have about what motion pictures are. And then there, up there we have uh, Martha Colburn's first films. Would you want you to, your daughter to marry one of these men? And then there's The Wizard of Oz and there's Gary Lambert, the wonderful Gary Lambert who taught me everything I know about film projection, which I later used to run dailies for major motion pictures that ran here in Baltimore. Now this came from when I did um, five years of 15 minute clips and quips on a morning, local morning TV show of, that, I was, that I ran films at the Orpheum and I was able to come in and talk about films on TV and try to get people to see films that were not on the first run shelf in their video stores. And a lady, and people would call in with questions. And a lady called in with a question about a film. They would always try to stump me. And very rarely did they. <laughs> Uh, but the, this lady uh, had a, a film she could not remember, and she it was very important to her. It was part of her childhood. All she could remember was a polka dot dress <laughs> and a vestibule. The lady had blonde hair, and I figured it. I figured it out for her that it was a Marlena Dietrich film, and she was so thankful that she sent me this copy photocopy of one of the lampshades from the Trocadero in, on Sunset Boulevard, and it is signed by all the major actors and actresses of the golden era. There's Betty Davis, 
There's Veronica Lake. There's George Brent. There's Mary Pickford. There's Luella Parsons, writ big. Writ large, Luella Parsons taking out most of the lampshade. <laughs> Dana Andrews, Edward G. Robinson, Claire Trevor, John Garfield. Uh, you know, Frank Sinatra, Judy Garland. Everybody's up there. <laughs> And uh, that, that's one of my most prized possessions.